final training and critical selection on our journey to the grand final on the 360 agenda. Cyril gets the green lights and the Ruckman are switched as Hawthorne names its strongest team of the season. Swans have touched down in Melbourne and Coach of the Year John Longmire joins us from the team hotel. And Collingwood searches for a strategy after Dane Bean's request to be traded. Jared Waitley, he's Mark Robinson this Thursday night. It's footy from all angles. Hello, Robert. Hello, Jared. Wound up, ready? Yeah, excited. The Swans have just arrived at their inner city hotel, so there were plenty of fans to greet them at the airport. And these are uh, these are scenes which have become synonymous with grand finals in recent years, with either one or two teams travelling. They're here. Team meetings tonight, and then the parade tomorrow. We have a light run, and then the big thing on Saturday. So John Longmire standing by about to join us. We have we're giving away our grand final tickets, which Where I have managed to retain throughout the day. I've kept them from you. Oh, I couldn't so find them. I think them. that's a success. I'll hold them the up. The number of people who told me stories today about things that they had misplaced and it caused them heart palpitations Wedding after ring. what you did to me. Wedding ring. Uh, the examples that we have here Sorry. of those who will be in contention tomorrow night when Adam Trelaw judges. Travis Boak <laughs> at the <laughs> urinal at the JT concert last night in Adelaide. That's huge. I, that's the leader. That's the clubhouse leader. That it's is not the for leader. us to judge. Well done. I challenged, I wanted to see someone marking over the whiz. And there they are, climbing over Warwick Kappa. So I'm, I'm happy with that. And Rory Sloan, I think uh, at Federation Square today, where the AFL live site is, just a bit of a scuffle. No, a that's got no way. chance. Boring. <laughs> Boring. That, that's nothing compared to having a wee with Travis Boat. <laughs> I, I, I tend to agree. Justin with you. Timberlake. So the last chances, uh, cheekiest interaction with a footballer this week. Hashtag them to us at a AFL 360. <laughs> well what are you done. looking forward to? I'm going to be self indulgent on one of our panellists and I'm going to say Jordan Lewis. Didn't know Jordan Lewis very well before he joined us on the AFL 360 replacing Brad Sewell. Through the year we've got to know him on and off the screen. A lot of people have met Jordan Lewis on the screen. What we've learned he's a deep thinking footballer. He's a footballer's footballer. He's not fast. He's just developed into a real leader at, at, at the Hawks. Had a, just a magnificent second half of the year and he goes into the grand final, I suppose, my closest person on the ground. Yes. So, you know what? I really want Jordan Lewis to play well. That's all. I just really want him to play well. And if the Hawks win, good luck to him. OK. You? Uh, I'm looking forward to the grand final entertainment. Which one? Falls which into bit? three categories. Which one? Which one? Good. First. Lionel Richie. So bad it's good. Angry Anderson in the Batmobile. Yeah. So bad it's memorable. Meatloaf. Where so do you think these two Ed are going to end up? Ed and Tom Jones. Well, I'm not sure. It's a sliding scale. It's really up to them. If they're in the Angry Anderson <laughs> I'm happy with Angry. Are you? Yeah. Oh, no, I'll tell I thought that was great. I just, I've got the wobbles up just a little bit on, on Tom Jones. Well, hi everybody. Nice to be here. Uh, very interesting. I've never actually seen uh, Australian rules football live. I've watched it on television. And I know even if you don't score a goal, you can still score a goal because you've got two extra hosts. Australians, you know, are straight ahead people. I know that. You know, they, they, uh, <laughs> they don't mess about. You know, if they like you, they're with you. And so far, since I've been coming here, they've been liking me. So I don't know what it's like to be on the other end. Well, you might want to ask me, like. <laughs> well, so I was told. I mean, uh, uh, so I was told. But uh, that's a shame because Meatloaf has done some great shows in the past. So, um, But that's not going to happen with Ed and myself. It's going to be, we know what we're going to do and we will do it. And hopefully they do it well. Right, let's get into the agenda, Robbo. John Longmire is standing by at the Swans Team Hotel. John, welcome to AFL 360. Hey, Jared, Robbo. That's when the Hawthorne team was announced tonight, Cyril Rioli and Ben McAvoy are in. That's the hottest news of the day. What was your reaction? Uh, probably we all thought that there was a chance to be named once Cyril played last week and pulled up well. He's a, an absolute champion of the game, so he was always a, a massive chance to come in once he played last week. And McAvoy's played against us before and done a good job, so I'm um, not completely surprised. Would, you, would there have been any sense of relief, John, if Rioli hadn't been named? 
Oh, I, I didn't really think about it that way, Jared. I just probably half expected, I guess, all the week that um, he might have been named the team after he played last week. So uh, we prepared for that scenario. We prepared with him out. So um, we have no control over it, and that's what's happened. So all your work's done, Horse. Like the, with the selection today, you don't have to meet up with the with the uh, line coaches tonight. The match committee. All your work's done. Oh, most of the work's done uh, for, for for now, Robbo. We uh, we still get together and have a have a chat tomorrow and uh, and do a little, bit more work tomorrow. So we just uh, finalise things then. But most of the work, the bulk of the preparation's been done. You've got a lot of first timers coming in. A lot's been said about them and how well they've played and and adjusted to AFL footy this year. Do you talk to them one on one again, or do you leave that to the line coaches to prepare them? Oh no! I mean, you, you have a chat with uh, with each of them if you think that's required, but uh, you don't go out of your way and you don't make too much of a big deal about it. It's uh, it's something that we've got some experienced players in our team that are very useful in that aspect and are able to talk to those younger blokes. Um, the combination of that, the the line coaches and the senior coach, uh, you don't want to go too over the top. You want to make sure that they're nice and relaxed and uh, really enjoy the whole experience for what it is. To make Jake Lloyd sort of comfortable, would you wear a gas mask while you were talking to him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I did ask him uh, a little bit more detail. Uh, I had to get to the bottom of that after I saw that photo, but we had a, we had a good uh, chat about it the other day. So if you told us you'd have to kill us, I take it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, well, I um, mean, it just show, shows you he's a dedicated kid and he works really hard and he's got the benefit of that hard work to be able to come in uh, round five, I think it was, and stay in the team. It's been a real credit to it. Just a young kid coming off our rookie list. He's, he's a great runner and a really good player. Everyone just, I mean, we're going to fill the week in as well. So we, we talk about selection, we talk about matchups. The, the, the one young fella, uh, Harry Cunningham, after the job he did on Stephen Hill and the job he did on Boomer, he's been on everyone's lips this week. How has he, how has he impressed you this year? Oh, he's impressed me since the moment he turned up at the club. He's a he's a great kid, a kid from Wagga, and uh, just a country country boy. And uh, he's turned up ever since he's come to the club. He's worked really hard, and he took his pre-season. Um, anyone who works hard in their break and then comes back in such good condition like he did last year, uh, you can't help but be impressed. Uh, he made a real impact in the pre-season for us, and really wanted to establish himself in the team after playing a few games last year. And he's a great athlete and a terrific kid. He's um, he just works hard at his game and he's well respected by the senior players, the younger players right throughout the footy club. Would you ever be a coach if I asked you which players are you going to go to, Isaac Smith or Brad Hill? <laughs> Would you ever be a coach horse to say, like American coaches, yep, he's going on him? <laughs> Uh, probably not, Robbo. I don't reckon there'd be too many coaches here that it's just, that it'd, uh, go and ask Clarko what he thinks about his matchup. Uh, what's stability worth to you, John, at this time of year? Not having to make a change throughout a final series. I guess we'll have to wait and see, Jared. I mean, it, uh, you know, we, we are happy that we've got to the stage that we've been able to have a settled lineup, but we've also been pleased with the players that are outside the team. Their emergencies are, have all been in good form as well, but we're confident in our 22. We've um, seen them play at the highest level the last couple of weeks. Um, it doesn't automatically mean it's going to happen again on the weekend. We know that. We know the challenge is ahead of us. We know the work still to be done, um, but it's good to go in with a settled lineup. How do you how do you deal, horse, with the commitment you've got? We had you on standby there, and we've got a we listen to Tom Jones talking about whatever he was talking about. I really was. I'll be honest. I really wasn't listening. Does that frustrate you that all these sort of other elements have to put have to take some of your mind or take some of your time? <laughs> Uh, it frustrates me that I couldn't get to the my lasagna tonight, Robbo. That was probably the biggest frustration. <laughs> was, uh, I haven't had dinner yet, so we're nice and hungry. <laughs> so, but if you've got a full book between now and whenever, when, when do you actually sit down and take your shoes off tomorrow night and say, right, I, I'm going to, I can, this is my time. 
Uh, oh, probably tomorrow afternoon uh, after the grand final parade. It's uh, it's very much down to then uh, making sure that you you focus on the downtime and you and you relax a little bit and hopefully all the work's done by then and then it's just a matter of waking up game day. I'm sure the players get anxious. I won't say nervous. Get anxious. What do you do the night before? I mean, you, do, you, do you have to avoid playing the game and coaching the game in your head? Uh, yeah, you probably do a bit, Robbo. You have to um, make sure that you switch off as well and um, and really trust that the work and the preparation has been not only for the week but uh, for the whole year since pre-season started. You've got to be confident in your processes and the people that you've got in place and ultimately your playing group and your leaders who, who are about um, directing what happens on the ground. So you've got to be confident in those things and then you, you wake up and then get into it on game day. It's a, a process that we've been down before. Uh, obviously Hawthorne have as well been there third in a row so both teams are, have some experience at that. So what do you do? Dinner? Movie in the hotel? What, early to sleep? What, 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 what are your plan? <laughs> No, just like everyone else, Rob, I always have, uh, have some dinner and have a chat to a few of the boys and uh, sit back in, front of, in my hotel room and watch a bit of telly. It's, uh, <laughs> nothing, no, there's no surprises, no secrets to it. There's been some great scenes out of Sydney this week. We've seen uh, Buddy on the front of the Daily Telegraph despite there being four NRL teams in the preliminary finals. Um, great scenes out of training with the numbers that turned up. In your time in Sydney, John, is this, is this the closest to fever pitch that the Swans have had things? Uh, it's been a really interesting week, I guess, Jared. if you consider that the Sydney team's in still involved. The, the Rabbitohs, obviously, and the Roosters is massive uh, game this weekend. And, and to have some exposure during that week and having such a cutthroat final happening in the rugby league is is uh, been pretty significant up in Sydney. Unless you've lived in the, up north, you don't really understand the importance of it. And it is it has been a, a good thing that we've been able to get under the papers. But um, it doesn't really count for much if we don't go ahead and do the job that we need to do this Saturday. We debated last night whether Franklin is the sort of player who uh, would thrive on such an occasion. Peter Hudson described it as the most pressure he's ever seen on an individual going into a grand final. We sort of feel like he might eat that up. What's your sense of him as, uh, as a personality towards that? Oh, I think he's, uh, I mean, just going about his business this week. I mean, we've come to the meetings and, and trained and and uh, outside the press conferences. I mean, you know, obviously the, everyone sees all the press conference and the attention, but inside the four walls of the footy club, it's it's a fair bit different than that. It's just about going about your business. And he's one of the 22 this week who's just been able to prepare and look at the opposition and study that and, and look at what we want to do and, and uh, prepare as normal as possible. And that's what we try and do. We try and make sure we stick to the same routine week in, week out. We Viewing games and preparing for games. It gets a bum rush, um, bum rap a little bit, um, Buddy Franklin. I spoke to Henry Playfair in the year, horse, as you know, and I spoke to him again this week about the amount of work that Buddy Franklin does off the ground in uh, and looking at tape and, and reviewing the forward line and, and trying to get the structure right. As, as, as the season's played on, have you been surprised or have you been very, very impressed with the ability of, of Buddy to, to recognise and identify? identify certain situations in the in, in the game. Well, I mean, he's, he's played such a long time at a great club at Hawthorne and uh, is so experienced and played at the highest level for so long. So he, I think there's no surprise that he knows his footy and he's able to spend a lot of time talking to Henry um, Playfair, our forwards coach, and Nick Davis and the other forwards as well. And, and they're able to spend a lot of time uh, discussing different things during the week, which is fantastic. It's terrific to have input from all of our players and Lance is one of those blokes who's got a lot of experience to draw upon. So it's been really happy. We've been really pleased with the way we've been able to draw upon his experiences, which has been terrific. And what did you make of the honour of being named as the coach of the year, John? I'm sure some people on the outside think this is an outfit now that coaches itself, but it was a great endorsement of the work you've done from the start of the season all the way through. Yeah, it's a great um, honour, Jared, to, to be able to... Any award that you're voted upon by your peers is uh, is terrific and it's highly valued inside our industry and it's really a recognition, though, of the football department and the playing group. And, uh, you know, I certainly think that you know, well, the margin wasn't great. And if you have a look at what Alistair and his coaching group and his football department have been able to do this year with some adversity, it's been a real credit to them as well. So it is more about the football department than, uh, than an individual award, but it's still something we accept and, and we're very grateful for. Oh, we're grateful for your time, John. Get to that lasagna and good luck for Saturday. 
Good on you. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Robbo. See you, John. John Longmire with us at the Swans Team Hotel. He was pretty relaxed. He wasn't relaxed early, but we sort of got him a little bit relaxed. This would be interesting to be in a premiership coach because, mm. I mean, as, as much as you rely on the players to do everything, and they all say it, even the great Lee Matthews, you're, you're helpless in some way. You just want to make sure, lying in bed, that you've ticked off everything that you could possibly do. You don't want to have sudden wake-ups. God, have I done that? Have I said that? It, uh, I reckon it would be a pretty stressful night for him tomorrow night. The Hawthorne changes, which has been the, the headline act of the week. Um, you know, I sort of had hesitated right through the week on Rioli, and then I saw the vision of him training today and thought, oh, he's playing. Oh, <laughs> the way he's going around at training, oh, there's no doubt that he's You playing. were talking me out of it, you yeah, know. Yeah. I was really strong that he was going to play. I was going home and I going, I think Jared's talking me out of this. <laughs> and the other, Ben McAvoy is a good story here. He was dropped in 2010. He'd played seven games in a row on the way to the grand final for St Kilda and he got dropped. And then there was an injury in the draw and he played in the replay and lost. And here he is after, uh, after having lost his place in after round 21 he did, and we spoke about him a couple of times he did everything he could in the VFL and he gets the call up at the last. Really looking forward to listening to I think Alistair Clarkson's having a press conference tomorrow morning. He'll be asked the explanation I'm really looking forward to it. Is it as simple as Segler didn't handle the can handle it last week or is it the bigger bodies of of um, Mike Pike um, does he think that McAvoy might be able to drop back a little bit at times to, to, to help him in defence um, who knows with, with the Rioli one I, I've been arguing this a couple of times this week and I, and I want to say it again football instinctively is a risky bit it's a risky sport You've got to take on. You've got to. You've got to. You've got to do something risky on the ground, which gives you great reward, right? But it could also hurt you. You've got Cyril Rioli sitting there, and you're in the selection. Do you play him or not? Do you play him or not? Football's a go get them sport. Let's take on the game. Let's take on the oppositions. When you get the ball, everyone, move, run, bang, bang, create chaos for the opposition. That's what football is, and that is what Cyril Rioli is. And when he got through last week, I, don't, I didn't really care that he only had six touches. Mm -hmm. If he's available and he's got a game under his belt, he's playing. It was nine, it'll be 91 days between matches he's on a he, he can't win or can't he can win he can lose he kicks for all in the first half hawks when you're a genius <laughs> alistair clarkson he doesn't touch it and the swans win people are going oh bad decision bad decision the swans a picture of stability what a what a fortuitous position to be in that form and injury have stayed away to allow you to walk through a final series with the 22 intact Gate one entry, <laughs> section N30, row G, seat nine. Have you any idea where that is? They're good seats, that much I know. Yeah. Gate one is right around here on this one too. Yeah, yeah. Yep. N30. Whoever walks away with those is going to be a happy person. Hey, it's a tradition now in grand final week. What's happened? Alistair Clarkson's been linked to his next coaching job. Last year, yeah. Mike did it, put him at West Coast, <laughs> didn't and like then that. had to don the helmet. Didn't like that. Yeah, it's off to Adelaide now. D mm. Done deal happening on Tuesday. Andrew Jarman knows. Next Tuesday, there'll be an announcement yeah. to say that the Adelaide Crows have signed Alistair Clarkson <laughs> to a five-year deal, 1.4 a year. Do you the know, Intel you know, did say yeah. if they win, right. it's definitely done. If they lose, well, then he could stay. <laughs> Seven million over five years, but and of course, it. You know, we laugh about it because it was funny, but mm. it's a firestorm in Adelaide. So much so that the Crows have had to release a statement saying to suggest the club would contact a rival coach during final week is simply wrong. Well, that's a poor press statement. Yeah, to come out and say nothing, <laughs> or you come out and say it's not true. Well, if they didn't get contact him this week, did they last week? I mean. <laughs> Seriously, I think it's just a courtesy to oh, Alistair. Maybe. Alistair, Alistair Clarkson last year spoke quite brilliantly after he was linked. And unfortunately, great mate of ours, a great mate of mine, I know he's a good mate of yours, but then Mike had to wear the hit. He spoke so, so, so honourably after that by saying, people don't know me. If people think I'm going to break contracts and leave this football club, they don't know me as a person. And I hold great faith in what people say. I say that all the time. If Elsa Clarkson walked out on Tuesday and got announced as the Crows coach, 
I don't know what I'll do, but I will lose faith in humanity I yet know, again. I know what you'll do. Mm. We'll be called in for an emergency show. That's what will happen. That won't be happening. <laughs> we would have thought that last How time. selfish are you? You just think about me, me, me. <laughs> uh, the grand final parade tomorrow brings uh -huh. Melbourne to a standstill. It's one of our great cultural festivals, I think. There's never Who's been a parade it? that hasn't had 100,000. You'll see it live and exclusive here on Fox Footy. <sighs> Sandy Roberts, Jason Dunstall, Alistair Lynch, Barry Hall. He'll scare the kids. The kids will be too scared to go up to Baz. <laughs> go Quarter on. to midday. And we want you to participate in it as well to enrich the coverage. Um, so photos and messages, maybe something to your favourite player or something about how you're feeling, how you're sharing the experience. Just hashtag it AFLGF Parade. And we're going and to run feature tomorrow. on the coverage. Oh, on the gonna, coverage of the parade. What about us tomorrow night? Uh, we'll be busy with our crazy photos. Oh, yeah, we can't have everything, can we? No, we can't have everything. OK, the Dane Beams situation, which broke last night, requesting the trade out of Collingwood. This is how it's all landed in the aftermath. I think when Dame Beams walks out of Collingwood, so too does Nathan Buckley's premiership plans. And I think that Nathan will be devastated with that, that news. His father is uh, suffering from cancer and he wants to get the family back together. It's as simple as that. Look, we always hear the same rumours that you would hear about Beamsy or other players. At the end of the day, Dane is someone that's got a good open relationship with Bucks and the club. The only issue that he's raised or his manager is about the fact that his father's been sick and he wants to return. Mm. So we can only take it on face value. Brisbane have put an offer to uh, Dane, which I think you know suits him and all the rest of it. It's now incumbent on on the Brisbane Lions to come up with a deal to facilitate anything that happens. Otherwise, you know, Dane is a required player at the Collingwood Football Club. We're talking about a player now that's in the top 15, 20 best players in the competition. He's in the prime of his career. If a bloke was saying, right, I hate the club and I'm going, that's a different situation. But uh, this is a bloke who loves the club and, uh, and obviously loves his family and is uh, in a very awkward situation, which we hope to be able to facilitate. But it just needs other parties now to come to the party for us to be able to do a deal. So the challenge to word, Brisbane, no, no belligerence, but, you know, fair is fair. You want him, you come to us with a deal. If the deal's not good enough, we won't be dealing. Gold Coast, if Gold Coast decided they want Dane Beams and they came to Collingwood with a deal and they believed it was a better deal than what Brisbane are offering, Collingwood may entertain a Gold Coast deal. Dane Beams' father lives on the Gold Coast. Dane Beams wants to go back to Queensland. Collingwood will say, we'll put you in the same bloody street, mate, as your father. Um, Brisbane want him. Five years, seven, seven, seven fifty. They've got their heart set on him, mate. Yep. They're all in on him. They don't want to, they don't want to give up much more than pick four. They yep. don't want to give away Ace or Mays. They just don't want to. They're trying to build a club. Collingwood's saying, tough hit. To can't even say that. <laughs> Collingwood was saying, well, bad luck. You want him, you uh, you come to the party. They're not giving up on him. They're not giving up on him. Oh, there's, there's no rush. No, there is no there's rush. A, you know, there's a settling period here, and then there's... You know, the Lions are going to have to do pick four plus, and the debate the of three is weeks is going to be the plus. How's contracts going in footy at the moment, Jerry? Uh, less, but this is a mechanism legitimately set up for those in contracts, is if you do leave... Uh, it, it's a system that barters for fair compensation. So, and this isn't your standard issue. No, it's not. There's a lot of so extraordinary issues yeah. at the moment. So, and we shouldn't just um, categorise it all together. But I think, I think pick four plus is a good starting point. Yeah, who's the plus? Well, that's to be. It'll be someone between you know eight and fourteen on the list. I eight and fourteen. Yep. Pick four is that's a good starting I've got point. Rowan Buick or something. Or, uh, they, 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 I'm not. I'm not going to. Don't know. But Dane Beams is a top ten midfielder. Yeah, yeah. He's 25. Yeah. They're going to sign into a five year deal. He's he, he doesn't have to approve himself. He has arrived as a legitimate superstar. Collingwood got every right to ask for pick four plus. Mm -hmm. Now, Brisbane. <laughs> Are saying, well, this guy wants to come to us. We'll give. Well, there you go. There, there's, there's pick four. That, the, Collingwood got a lot of hand in this. Yep. A lot, a lot of hand. They're holding three aces, two aces maybe, two pair. <laughs> it's 
strong a strong single pair. I, I like Brisbane's Two hand as well. What's Brisbane got? I think Brisbane hand is quite strong. The player wants to go there on compassionate grounds, mm -hmm. and I think that that's a different scenario to the usual grab for money and so on. Fight nights. Let's bring in the fight. Bring them in. They know grand finals, all right. Baz and Cam. Oh, they're they? at the Foxtel Cup over at the MCG. <laughs> dumb and dumber. Oh, <laughs> your gloves so. go very well with your lipstick tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was heckled. Worst premiership play we ever had, Moon. <laughs> that was very <my> bad. <laughs> I remember the first time I was ever in the paper was Cooter Fees on my back taking a bath. <laughs> and Mum put it on the fridge and I said, can you get that friggin' thing out? <laughs> Mate, we've been standing here for 10 is minutes my... waiting for you just to shut up. Is my skin complexion all right? Is my teeth OK <laughs> is tonight, look. Robbo? I seen you after the show um, two nights ago. People on your back, you started crying. Oh. <laughs> We've read that, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you suck. We love having you here, Vossi, but we've got to whack the bloke who's not here, Mark Robinson. Well, where are you? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God, dick over the room. <laughs> well, the only good that's become of this is this room actually smells nice now, but I'm going to stab you with a blood knife. <laughs> Uh, the fun of fight night. Barry Hall, welcome. G'day boys. Hello, Hello guys. Really good Hello, to have Jared. you. Hello, Robbo. Excited, are we? Absolutely. Yep. yep. Best, best week of the year. Best day of the year today, actually, when you get that, that training. When you go down, there's, you know, the spring, obviously, the sun's on your back. Uh, you know, eight or 10,000 people down there for that last session. Just touch? You, just it? touch. The ball Everyone's zips happy. around. Yeah. Everyone's happy, laughing. Obviously, there's a couple of boys who are, who are pretty distraught. But usually, you don't find that out after, till after the training session. So the ball just zips around. Yeah, it's it's really, it really is a great it's, day. It's a great build-up because you got that last training session and then you've got the grand final parade. It just sort of builds itself into, obviously, that day, the biggest day of your life, just about. Um, it just builds up beautifully. Obviously, uh, Melbourne's a buzz at the moment, so I mm. uh, can't wait for the Grand Final Parade, um, which um, Fox is covering as well. So it's going to be a, a really good build up to you know the two best teams going around in 2014. I asked Horse before, how does he avoid coaching the game in his head? How did you guys avoid playing the game in your head on the Friday night? Look, it's, it's tough. I, mean, I think people say, oh, you shouldn't. Think about the game. You know what? Just, just think about it. How can you not? Yeah, exactly. Just, just embrace it. If you try and sit there and go, oh, geez, I've got to stop thinking about it, you think about it more. Just think about it. You know, I'm going to have a good game. I'm going to tackle. I'm going to chase. Not that I ever did any of that, though, <laughs> Robert. <Robbo. laughs> I mean, Jared, but, you know, you, you do. You just think about it. Just just take it on board. Did you watch movies Jeez, on the hotel room? Yeah, I, I didn't yeah. think about it at all. <laughs> did you? No, not at all. What did you do? I just watch movies and... Go to kittens? Um, huh? <laughs> 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 Well, there are rated movies. Uh, that takes a place. Yeah, but, I did say, um, but they don't come up on the uh, they don't come up on the bill either, no, but, do they? But some players are different. I didn't think about the game at all until game day. You get up game day, you prepare, you go for a walk by yourself, you go. And what would coffee. you do? On, seriously, what, what game, just, game day? Well, my, my, 2007, my, my my wife took off to get her hair done. Right? So I had my little fella, little Jagger, and I was vacuuming the floor. Game day. So you just and you went out and kicked six. Five. Yeah, I should have kicked six. <laughs> Thanks, man. But yeah, you're right. You just you try and keep it as normal as possible. Like I said, if you don't think about it, great. If you do think about it, just just think about it. Embrace it. It's, it really is the greatest day of your life when you walk onto that field and a hundred thousand people erupt, you know, and you just. I used to love walking on and just turning straight around, looking at the stand, and just seeing how packed it is. And I've got such a buzz from doing that. What about when you, you know, the day before you write a really big artic article? Mm -hmm. Do you think about it much in your head? Some of your terrible, oh, yeah, terrible no, articles that you write? No, it's a, it's a good question. Yeah. In bed at nine, if I know I've got, a, I've done. Do you think about the backlash from that article? No, no, I think about how I'm going to write it. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. So then I get up the next morning, I'm ready to attack mm -hmm. it. Seriously, there, that happens. That happens. Mm -hmm. so I, I, I'm going to ask you again. I ask, I ask you every year. When you run up the race, when you walk up the race, and it's and it's a bit grey, it's a bit cavernous. When you take those first steps, and you say you look around, what did you feel when you when you got there? People have told me you f you feel like you're floating. Yeah. You don't feel your feet. You feel like you. Mm. 
running on running on clouds almost. It's um, electrifying feeling. You can't describe it. Um, I, I certainly can't describe it too well. It's just a, a feeling that uh, look, you'd love to have um, the adrenaline. And yeah, you'd love to have every week. Unfortunately, you can't, and that's why it's such a unique experience and and something you want to get back to once you have experienced that sort of thing. And you know, we hear about it all the time. Players want to get back to feeling that. Obviously, after the game's a great thing, but running out there first off, obviously, uh, you know, there's anticipation mm. and and that that cra the crowd roar just lifts you. I remember running on '99 when I was a 19 year old kid, and, and Carlton came out after we did, and the roar, I almost panicked. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't was believe really? the sound of this roar because I'd never been in front of 100,000 before, and it was it's probably why I had such a bad day, Robert. <laughs> yeah. when, when, you, when you're young, <laughs> when you're young like that, I, I thought I was I was 19 years of age. I thought, what am I doing here? Mm. Like I don't belong here. You and, thought and that's, that uh, yeah, that's while you were on the ground? Yeah, I thought, geez, I just don't belong here. This so, is where I used to watch yeah, you know, players play exactly AFL. The same. So when people finals. talk about being finals experienced, it is exactly that, mm -hmm. that you feel oh, a part of it, which is confidence and you can go out and do what you've been preparing yourself to do. But when you're a kid, yeah. you've got all these doubts you don't in know. you. Doubts and in you your don't head. feel like you're part of the team. Like, I didn't feel like I was part of the team that year because I'd, I'd come in on the back of someone being suspended. And you had duck year. eggs. You know, duck eggs. I had Perry <laughs> and I had McKernan, <laughs> I had Shoal, I had Shadow yeah. Brown. I had all these great <laughs> players around me. And I was the same. I was thinking, what am I doing yeah. here? I don't deserve to be here. But eight years later, you you work your backside off, you play in finals game, you, you play in losing finals game, you get your heart broken, and in bio seven I was ready. Well the difference mm. is you run on like your own at then. Yeah. You've you've been there before, you've played final series, you've had disappointments, you just want it. So you run out there like you How's the different attitude? You spoke to Don Moore about what does he do with those players who haven't played. I remember I got a text message off Bomber the night before saying you're one of the best key forwards in the game, you deserve to be out there, you will lead this team tomorrow. And that was the best thing that I ever Yeah, can you remember the Yeah, I remember I just went looked at it and went, oh geez, I was not needed that. Because the night before I was just sound a little bit a little bit edgy. Yeah. So little things like that coaches are smart. That's good. Yeah. What did Rosie send to you? Don't whack anyone. You big bald idiot. <laughs> <laughs> get out of Goodsy's way, can you? <laughs> There's a bloke called Mickey O, get out yeah. of the way. Yeah. Can you be the dummy full forward? <laughs> I didn't have a phone back then. <laughs> Very old fashioned. <laughs> uh, the specifics of this game, uh, how excited are you to see Cyril Real? Well done, boys. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was a great, uh, great decision. It was a tough decision. I, I feel for Jonathan Sipkin because good long boy. Um, you know, played in one last year. And I thought he was the, he's almost become the ultimate sub player, mm. Simpkins. So I actually thought they were going to keep him for that role. But look, this guy here turns a game on its head in five or ten minutes. He may only get eight or ten touches, but normally those eight or ten touches result in something very good. I don't think we should be expecting him to come out and have a big day but he might just do something that could turn a game very quickly. Well, you weigh up the pros and the cons, and people say, oh, what if he goes down early? But look, if, if he starts as a sub, which we all expect he, he might, um, his impact when he comes on the ground is, you know, he only needs eight or ten touches, and he can he can set some goals up and kick some goals himself, but he can actually just lift the side. He's a unique player that can lift a team, and they just might need that in the last quarter. So uh, the pros and cons, are, I reckon, uh, you know, there's certainly more upside than down. What do you think, uh, Robert? Does he start it? Well, I might. My belief is he's starting. He's, starting. he's not going to be the sub. Yeah. It can't be the sub. Yeah, I agree. Go it can't be. Into it. it can't yeah. be because if they sub him off and he does hurt himself, they're one down. And mm. you guys know, they're so torrid. You, you can't have yeah. one less rotation in the last quarter. You're all exhausted anyway. You're all going on pride and whatever in the last quarters. You've been Brad Sewell yep. on this night yep. and the last time around. Um, what's he go through? Oh uh, look, I was probably in a little bit different situation where I, I had it coming for a good month and, and I knew I was pretty much cooked where Sully believes he's a, he's a genuine 18, in the 18, let alone the 22. So he, he would be shattered, no question about it. He's been a, a big game player for them. But you know what? The last thing he can do is show the group that he's feeling mm -hmm. down. That is, that is the worst thing that he could do. He know? wouldn't do that. The no, he wouldn't. He like, wouldn't absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we had a had a teammate in 07 who probably took it the wrong way, uh, and I had a teammate in 09 in Matty Stokes who took it brilliantly. And I remember speaking to Stokes, he, you know, that week or those coming weeks about how I should handle it, and he just said the last thing you can do is is let everyone he know how brief, disappointed yeah. you were and how disappointed you are. So I took that on board and that's what he has to do. He has to be about the team. It's pretty important that he does do that because, uh, as you said, there's some young players in there that, that uh, haven't played much footy and he could he could teach them a little bit. Mm. Yeah, sure, he's going to be disappointed he's not in there and, and so he should be, but, um, you know, he, he can 
still give them something. You can give some advice to a younger player and, and have some sort of impact. Let me ask you about Franklin, because you've been this figure. You've been the central popular figure in Sydney. This is a bit more, though. Franklin, this was him as he arrived in Melbourne tonight. Yeah, it's exciting times. Um, as I said during the week, uh, to get an opportunity to play in another grand final is something that I'm really looking forward to and um, can't wait to get out of there on Saturday. How are you feeling about playing on your old team? Are you rough, relaxed about it? I relax, happy, excited, um, all those things. I, as I said, I'm just happy just to get another opportunity at a grand final. Is he the most famous footballer of our lifetime? I reckon he's close, yeah, definitely. I, I, look, I, I've said it a couple of lunches this week already. He's one of the biggest names in Australian sport, let alone AFL football. Um, so for them to get him up there, and look, as we've spoken about the rugby league up there. There's four teams Look at still, that, mate. Front page. There's four teams still involved in the final series in rugby yeah. league, and front and back page, Buddy Franklin. That's what he got paid the big bucks for. Obviously, we know his on-field talents uh, run deep, but you know he's he's the human the human highlight reel, and he's the human headline. And this is exactly what Sydney want and why they got him up there. We know the AFL were, were pretty angry that he didn't go to the Giants. Do you think now they're sitting back going, this is great? Yes. The second they're best loving thing. every minute of it, aren't they? Now <laughs> yeah, they, they are. He's yeah. on, like you said, the front and back yeah. page of the Sydney paper, which, which is non-existent for the Sydney Swans. Even GWS and she this week and, and Dave Matthews, the CEO, I know they missed out on him, but they've admitted this is just great for football in Sydney. He's bigger at the Swans than he could have been at the Giants. Yeah, I, 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 oh, no I, I tend to agree with that. Hey, hey, We'll talk about pressure. Buddy Franklin knows what it takes to play good, consistent football. He's done it for a long time. Pressure's just going to come from outside influences. Internally, they'll be saying, you know what you need to do. Go out there and do it. Internally, he wouldn't have much pressure on himself. This what I called him. The, he's the king of the jungle. And the king of the jungle, they're not scared of anyone, no, yeah. mate. They're not. Jared asked before about not fearful of the stage. People want to get out there and say, yes, this is my place. One thing you don't want Buddy Franklin to do if you're a Hawthorne supporter is set the, set the one through, sail one straight Early. through the middle, first mm. kick. He'll be strutting. Imagine the, the yeah. chest, well, mate. You're talking about you talk about look back since players who walk down to the, the full forward line in, in that game. You know, I had Carey, that strut, you know, Brereton. You know, Jonathan Brown, this bloke, he's got, got his strut back over the last oh, eight bought. or nine, ten weeks. And when he struts, Jesus, good to watch. Yeah. So, Franklin Tippett, yeah. Roughhead, three giant forwards in the game. We haven't had a five goal bag in a grand final since Moons did it in 2007. No. Well, really? Could we have, could we have <laughs> a game that really features the key forwards? Well, there's very much the X factor in, in Buddy Franklin. He could kick eight goals. You would not be surprised at all. But tradition tells us it's hard to kick goals as a key forward. It's a tight, tough game. Getting an inside 50 is going to be scarce. Um, they're going to get numbers back. All those sorts of things. And as you said, Moons in uh, you know, not, not that long ago, but he kicked five goals. And that's been the most, uh, as you can see there. It's been very, very scarce and there's some good players up there. Oh, They're yeah. no slouches. So it's it's really tough to kick goals grand final today. We did kick 100 that day, so we probably should have. <laughs> the, uh, the thing about why, well, people are animal anyway when they defend in normal home and away. But on grand final day and preliminary final weekend, there's reckless behaviour oh. from defenders and third men in and midfielders. They just jump in to make one-on-ones into, there's no into packs and there's the no balls tomorrow. You've are got to leave, scrub forward. You've got to leave everything out there. And all coaches will say that during the day, quarter time, half time, three quarter time speeches. Are, some are probably the best speeches I've ever heard in football. Just leave everything out there. You know, 09 was, don't forget what happened last year. Don't walk off this ground without a medal. Just emotion Just charged. emotionally yeah. charged and you run out there ready to, to do whatever it takes. And players will do that. They'll just, put their head in positions where it shouldn't go. It just shows you how mental this game is though. Because you play a home and away game and you give 100% what you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you yeah. go into a final series where it's cutthroat and you just got that little bit extra. So the body can go. Mm. It's just a matter of the mind mm. being desperate enough to, to send the message to the body to do it. Adam cool. Goods, do you feel like this might be his last game? Uh, yeah, look, Goodsy, we know he's a complete package. I, I've been really worried about his mobility. I think uh, when he doesn't have the ball, he's been struggling to, to put pressure on. So, look, if Goodsy can kick two or three goals and they get a win, I'd like to see him retire and finish on top because he's been one of the great players for the Sydney Swans. You don't want to see him go on and struggle for a year. Uh, so, look, I hope it's a fairy tale ending for him. But um, as I said, his mobility and his run, which he's been so good at for so many years. Um, his movement wounded. last week was... He, he was doing it last week, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, he's Jared been the last spoke week. about first thing he spoke about on Monday was the, his movement, yeah. and it was great to watch. Mm. It really.
really was. Mm. Great, great footballer. So what, footballer. what will happen? How have you got it pegged in your mind? Uh, I think Hodge will drop back um, to give some support to the to the key defenders. Uh, so I think Hawthorne are going to really lock down. Um, and look, I think it's going to be a, a, a tight contest. I think it's going to be low scoring. I don't think it's going to be free flowing at any stage. We know those two sides are great offensively, but they're really good defensively. That's why they're there. So I reckon it's going to be a low scoring game. Look, I think the Sydney Swans' talent just runs really deep, particularly in the midfield. And I think they'll get inside 50 enough to kicking winning scores. So I reckon about three goals, sort of close ish. But um, yeah, it's I reckon the Sydney Swans for me by about three goals. How does it look in your mind? Well, it's friends? funny. We look at it. I'm a little bit the same. I mean, we all think Sydney because of their talent, but. I've said this a couple of times, but I think Hawthorne are the best club in the in the land, on and off the field. From what they had to go through this year to get where they are, off field their success. I don't think a club really comes near them, to be honest. But the big matchup for me is going to be Gunston and Rampy. Now Hale's going to push forward, so Grundy's going to go to him. That we we know that he takes a big key tall forwards or the resting right. Richard Ruffy. Richard's Ruffy. Now, Gunston on Rampy the last couple of games this year uh, hasn't really got off the chain. He's only kicked the one goal in the last two games, and none of them are on actually Rampy at that stage. So that's the matchup I think Hawthorne need to isolate. He's got that height. He's got a big reach on him, uh, Gunston. They have to isolate that one as much as they can and try and kick their goals through Gunston. Now, he's a big game player. He's played well in big finals. So to me, if Hawthorne win, Gunston has a big day. All right, enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's, it's been great nice. to have you as part of it on Fight Night. All the bum tapping and uppercutting along the way. They oh, never this took is it, off air it? at any is stage, it? which I no, think no. is a triumph. Baz is and Cam with us no, on the really. Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, not really. the rascal of the year to be named the CEO oh, of Rascal. Oh, 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 this is here. Oh, 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 Bob Murphy. Oh, 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 Up next. The red <laughs> Times come just for a public statement as from um, Rascal Enterprises. <laughs> we have lost sight of the essence of what Rascal is. Whether the act itself is cheeky, naughty, or silly, above all, it must be lovable. That's kind of Rascal 101. That's what Rascal for beginners. Is this is on the more aggressive end of Rascal behaviour. We just see. So oh, there it goes. Oh. And oh. <laughs> this is at the heart oh, of Rascal. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I really like the slow motion. And then little man here. <laughs> I almost penalised this week's Rascal because it was such an obvious Rascal that I thought it's too mainstream. But then... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is... <laughs> <laughs> <That's so good. laughs> Sometimes if, you know, if it walks like a duck, yes. it sounds like a duck. <laughs> the King Rascal himself just... Is he... <laughs> he just reminding us all of what it takes to, to take out the medal. <laughs> <laughs> Port Adelaide is having a quick chat and then he has a listen and that's what they're going to do. Just took a mark, went to dish off of the handball and then the cameraman, we, we actually had to get a lip reader in. Yes. Go back Joe, kick it. <laughs> we had to call the experts in. Our rascal camera just caught Steve Morris, who is a who is a past rascal winner. He just slapped out the kangaroo's drink bottle, and then he <laughs> said, <laughs> "How do you pick this stuff his, up?" Oh, we've got we've got yeah. actually now we've got a budget for cameras. <laughs> It has been a rich field and now it is time to award the Rascal of the Year trophy. It used to be the Cameron Clayton Medal, which at times I think has been sort of a 1960s membership from the Balaclava race course, for instance. But we have we have gone up. Who hey, 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 made this? The budget went up. I was mm. at home all week making that. That's you guys are all good. That's busy look. with the grand final. I'm I'm working at are Enterprises. They are they full? Well, I like to keep my fluids up as I worked <laughs> on it. These ones are full. They're, oh, they're are full. They? There's quite the bounty on offer here. Yeah. yeah. Do you get, I imagine there's lobbying to the chief executive of Rascal Enterprises along the way. It's Did, um. Well, it's a pretty uh, complex operation. I'll even want this is what I actually wear to the to the board meetings of um, <laughs> Rascal Enterprises. Yeah. By the way, well, welcome, welcome to the site. <laughs> I only see you once a year. I know. I like it's great it. Great to have I you. Like it over here. I, 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 
You're here next year. You're here. <laughs> Lewis over there. I want Bob over here this I'm year. I'm not prepared to give up Bob. You're well, you're traded out. He's traded out, 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 out anyway. <laughs> Carl Stephen Amick or Kochi are oh, coming really? in to do 360 oh, wow. next year. Oh, uh, I like the sound now, of that. Now, there's a show on Fox about Holmes getting made. He's pretty good too, the host of that. <laughs> Don't know his name. Right. Holmes revisited or something. I'm going to contact him and You'll see if You'll probably have in. to learn his name along the way. That's <laughs> optional. Did um, know you for two years. Yeah, we've been a little bit guilty this week because we have encouraged cheeky behaviour and footballers yeah. have been unwittingly caught up in this in, in men's rooms, at concerts, at shopping centres. Yeah, so is, you got accosted yeah. today? Yeah, this was, I was just, you know, I was doing the grocery shopping actually. And, <laughs> Where at? And Matt or Michael, I think it was Matt, I think, it was in Brunswick and he came up and he was, he had, he had his jeans tucked into his cowboy, so I liked him straight away. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, he said, what do you reckon? I said, yeah, yeah. And we turned around, that was there and it was like, well, I mean. Perfect. He's in to. the running for the tickets. Oh, that's good. He does, he's a good guy. All right. Top five rascals from five on the countdown. Okay, well, we've got, we do have a bit of a mix of rascals this year. Um, and we had a bit of a crisis at the midpoint, mm -hmm. which that was when the, the, the statement came from the from yeah. the CEO. So, um, and this this one kind of got the ball rolling. This was a um, on the sort of more skillful side of rascals. So at number five, it's uh, Courtney Dempsey. This oh, is yeah. when the budget went up and we had to put in a rascal cam. <laughs> and he yeah. just looks at us there. <laughs> so <laughs> the camera paid for itself. Yes. I know. Yeah. So that was first uh, week. Courtney Dempsey yeah. in at number five. Now uh, you have spent an inordinate amount of time putting these in the correct order. Uh, yes. When we were kids, and you had to put classic catches in the right order. So I oh, admire yeah, no. your, con your conviction. Yeah. No, me. these aren't jumbled up. No. This is like ATP rankings, yeah. the <laughs> point system. So Courtney at number five. Number four. Number four, this is more of a, um, I guess we'd call it a more of a, this is a naughty rascal. Mm -hmm. So it's just on that edge. This is Tom Langdon from Collingwood who just had the two drinks <laughs> and he just gave them to his mate. Did he really? Yeah, he just gave them to his mate. So premeditated, I mean, it's technically theft. I mean, that's not, <laughs> it's, it's Look, theft. There you go. Oh, it is. So Tom Langdon, he, he snuck in at, at number four. Good so spotting. Good by so a future, you know, he's got a long future of rascal behavior ahead of him. Number three. Number three, so the bronze medal, which we have already seen. Now this is um, this is a real theatrical rascal. <laughs> oh, I, I think he should have won. <laughs> well, he, gets, he gets a bronze. So, oh. I mean, he's got his whole rascal oh, look at life. Him ahead holding of him. his back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> it was great. And he's, look yeah. at the red so kid. He, he's just looking at him. Yeah, so he, he warmed. He warmed our hearts. That so was the, a great know, one. Well the, done. Yeah. All right, the silver medalist. And the silver medalist, and I cannot tell you how close this man has come to being a two-time oh, well, Clayton win. Cameron Clayton medalist, and he just didn't quite get over the line. I with really Stevie liked his Oh, that was brilliant by Johnson. This was his sort of master class. <laughs> Again, this was at a bit of a low point for Rascal. We were sort of, it was a bit barren. It was a bit like a desert. And Stevie just oh, came in to remind us all. Why oh, didn't Kane Corns spot him? <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're, in, they're really in. He's, that's why he's the king rascal. What are you talking he, about in like that, anyway? Oh, not 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 really? too important. Do you, you go in the middle. You stand here and yeah. over there. And you go around the back. I'll go on the side. Well, you have all these great plans, and then the ruckman loses the hit out, so it all just goes to. <laughs> uh, it's such a good field. I'm racking my it's, brain as to what could be number one. Who is it? My favourites are there. So a drum roll. Before a drum roll. For the first so time we award the Rascal of the Year trophy. And coming down the outside like Kiwi, Kiwi. in the Melbourne oh. Cup. It was a late surge that not even the CEO could believe. <laughs> oh, no, no! And he's in the studio. No! <laughs> so, so many people, so many people have asked me in the last three years, what's Robbo like? Give you the. This is what Robbo is like. Oh well, this is a moment. You are the king rascal, Cameron Clayton. Oh, Mark Robinson, oh, rascal over the year. Geez. I never imagined it oh, would come to this. We're dying. God. <laughs> I look like a tool, didn't I? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Oh so well, thank you, thank you. I can't. I, I struggled to look. I struggled to look at it. Like a crook. I, I mean, you actually it, went. Oh, there. it's a fall in the cup hurdle. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
I've seen that look on his face before. Oh, oh well, that's. Oh, I don't know. It's great. It's good and bad. That's funny. I'm crying. I'm crying. Uh, oh, you're splendid, gee. Bob. You've enriched Brilliant. the show right throughout oh, the year yeah. and right to the last. Good on you guys. Do you want some? No, They're yours. Do you want yours. some? Split There's... them with the crew. I think Paul Kelly's first rule of rock and roll. We've got to thank the crew. So I think we divvy it up. <laughs> divvy it up for the crew. <laughs> Matt Robinson's well first done. rule of life. <laughs> <laughs> it's, They're it's, all mine. <laughs> They're all mine. <laughs> Have a great summer, Bob. Thanks, Enjoy Jared. the grand final. Thanks. Uh, very good. Thank All you. right, Great tomorrow stuff. night a special grand final edition of <laughs> AFL 360. In the afternoon, first the parade, full coverage here on Fox Footy as the masses gather in Melbourne. And then tomorrow night we'll be with you for 360 and we'll run you through the lineup shortly. Tomorrow night, our grand final eve edition of AFL 360. Premiership players, coaches and captains joining us to talk about the events of the week and the prospects of the September decider. They'll all be here along with Adam Trelaw, who's going to give away the last two tickets to the big one for the cheekiest interaction with an AFL player this week. Tomorrow night from 7.30, a 90-minute edition of AFL 360. It is fair to say that the Rascal of the Year has proven thunderously popular. <laughs> thunderously popular. Come on. No, Nearly as popular good. as Look the at... night posters yeah. which have been delivered to us. There you go. Now you have a bit of trouble holding them up to the camera, don't you? <laughs> I'll handle that. You, you hold too. Them both. I'll hold them so, like that. So uh, three dollars outside the ground. The winning edition available. And I think the losing edition usually goes to the G Bung Hotel, doesn't it? I think that's where the gallery of the losing ones goes. Yes. So well, if these... they put some beers on there, we might go there as well. <laughs> this is what Mark Knight has prepared for He's us. He's a genius, this Mark Knight. Yeah, he is, is a genius. Carrying on the tradition of Weg, such an instrumental part of what grand final victory is about. So that's the first sneak peek. Dean Cox will be with us tomorrow night. He's released a book as well, so uh, we'll have a chat to him about that. Big night tomorrow night. Tune in. Whatever. Can't wait. Way. Well done. Good you were funny tonight. You had that face oh, back no, on again. That was outstanding. That was great. See you tomorrow night. See you, everyone.